everyone. Thank you all for joining us. We know that you had so many tracks that you can choose from, so we're so touched that all of you are here. <laughs> so mm -hmm. nice of you. It's great, really. And a uh, part of us is my esteemed colleague, Jen Looper, as you just learned. She hails from Wellesley, Massachusetts, and she was nice enough to make me uh, try to clearly pronounce Massachusetts on a stage in front of all of you, so thank you, Jen. Are you literally from Wellesley, whoever said woo? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, well, I'm extremely honored to present my esteemed colleague, TJ Van Tol. And TJ is a former member of the jQuery core team. He's an unbelievable dancer. He's going to do a demo at the booth later on. And uh, switch the slide, TJ. <laughs> you might remember from last year. <laughs> You might remember from last year, uh, we had these fabulous outfits and we did a cooking show. So we're not going to do that today, we're going to do something completely different. Yeah, and the last member of our team is uh, Tara. It's Tara. Uh, yeah. Tara. We found uh, her wandering, wandering. Around. And uh, fun, Tara likes tacos, I like tacos. actually. She's a pretty it's big true. fan. Tara, also a big fan of emoji, and as you maybe, maybe you were able to tell, <laughs> kind of all really big fans of emoji up here. And somehow, even though we're still not exactly sure how it happened, uh, over a series of conversations and chats, our shared love of emoji turned into these amazing outfits that you see us wearing today. Yeah, emoji our, our Power family Rangers. has never been more proud. Yes, yeah. yes. Our album drops next week, so you'll make sure, you want to make fire. sure to check that out. And for those of you that are judging us, Tara, do you see them? Yeah, I see all of you. You're, yeah. you're judging us they're, right now. We have feelings, Olivier. you know. They're no, totally really. judging my $8 Walmart sweatpants that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> Excuse me, this is $10, <laughs> Abercrombie from Poshmark. You guys know, you ladies know. <laughs> for those of you who are, you probably haven't spent hours of your life Googling for the term yeah. emoji costume. You don't know, you don't yeah. know. Because let me tell you, we have. We have, we, we did. Yeah. And I'll just say, if you think these outfits are ridiculous, that things could have been quite a bit worse. I, I really wanted that could one. Have, yeah. I lobbied. Could have been worse. I was overruled. But believe it or not, we did actually build something. We uh, code. Turns we actually out. do code. Um, we do. I swear. Uh, and Jen, you want to tell them about what we built? We built the world's first and only emoji as a service. <laughs> polling and mobile and web polling app with sounds and colors, and it's called emoting.me. And you should feel free to pop open your browser on your phone and visit it while we're talking. So emoting.me, emoting me. And we actually came up with this idea because, like probably a lot of you, we use Slack a lot. And we wanted a way to vote on things, but we decided we would take an emoji and assign it to something we wanted to vote on and then use that emoji to make the vote. So emoji, vote, emote. And then we realized, as you know, emojis kind of convey enough emotion in themselves. Like, that's what we have them for. So imagine a really succinct way to show how you feel about your new company logo by simply clicking the poop emoji. I mean, it just makes it that simple. Yeah, so very effective. We, yeah, so we created the app to do just that. But you may be asking yourself, why do I need a real-time app? What's the point of all this? Can't you just refresh the screen? I mean, what about Ajax? Ajax was nice. TJ, explain, <laughs> please. Now, we built emoting for two main reasons, really. The first was we wanted to justify building an emoji Angular app at work for the last handful of weeks. I think you can all agree that that's a pretty cool idea. But the second is we wanted to show really how easy it is now to build apps that work in real time. Mm -hmm. And by the term sort of real time, really all we mean is apps that have data that refresh without the user having to take any sort of explicit action. They don't have to hit the refresh button. If you saw the emoting app earlier, you noticed how our charts and graphs sort of automatically redraw themselves as votes come in without you know, the user having to actually do anything in particular. Now, this is important because this sort of behavior is increasingly becoming an expectation of the apps we build. And it's becoming that way because there's a lot of apps that just do this right now. Yeah. You probably don't have to think too hard to think of apps that you use in your day-to-day -day work that have some of these real-time aspects to them. One that we use a lot is Dropbox. Yeah. I've always thought it's really cool that on Dropbox, if I upload a file to my Dropbox folder on my Mac, how that file immediately appears in Dropbox's web interface. Magic. Another one that we use a lot is Slack. And as you can see, we're pretty big fans of Slack. And what makes Slack really cool is that as you type in messages, 
those messages immediately appear across Slack's multiple environments, across the web, across its native apps, and across its desktop apps as well. And just to be clear, like, this, is, this is how we talk to each other this every day. This is pretty much progress yeah. dev realm right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is, I think most people in here would agree that building apps that work this way is pretty cool and fairly important. But traditionally, building these things have been, has been really kind of hard. Yeah. I mean, I know I have some personal experience trying to implement sort of a, that sort of thing on a smaller scale, right? But this was a few years ago, so I was using things like I, don't know, I, I had jQuery templates, and uh, what else did I have? Some long pulling a server, pretty proud of that one. That's always fun. Uh, really great architecture. Uh, needless to say, didn't work out the greatest. <laughs> but the thing is, um, you know, even for those of you that are thinking right now, maybe you've built something like Slack. You know, maybe you have some experience building apps that work that way. Remember that it's also increasingly a user expectation that your apps sync in real time across the web and native apps as well. If you think of the Slack example, for instance, one of the things that makes Slack so great and one of the reasons we love Slack is because it works so well not only on the web, but on Slack's iOS and Android apps as well. Now, the good news is we have better tools than jQuery templates and long pulling nowadays. <laughs> And really no now, yeah. <laughs> building real-time apps is now you know, considerably easier. We have Angular, of course, the reason that we're all here. We have, uh, we have NativeScript for building an Android, or <laughs> Angular apps on iOS and Android. And we have Firebase for enabling the sort of real-time data as uh, access part of these sorts of apps. So we talked earlier about how emoting is both a web and a native app, and we're going to tackle each of those in turn. So we're going to talk about the native first and then move on to the web. And when it comes to native apps, there's pretty much no one you'd rather hear from than our own Jen Looper here. Jen, how many apps have you deployed to the app stores? Um, it's about 20, and um, I have a problem. <laughs> Jen, Jen does have a little bit of a problem with apps. <laughs> Jen has also worked firsthand on our NativeScript Firebase integration. So Jen, I'm going to pass the baton to you. Why don't you tell people a little bit more about emoting native? All right. So when I say mobile apps, you say NativeScript. Mobile apps, native, native script. script. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So why would you go ahead and build a mobile app? Well, um, for the first, first thing, we can go ahead and use these um, native modules to collect images. Well, that's pretty simple, but think what we could have done. We could have used something like this new face-twisting emoji uh, photo editor thing that just came out on iOS. I have to try this thing. Uh, <laughs> we can use this uh, face swapping. You know, I just face swapped with NativeScript Cat, so FYI, that, that was fun. Uh, we could have done something like these Snapchat filters. That was, that, that, that was a possibility, yeah. too. As you see, TJ doesn't have a soul, so he didn't get the flowers. Yeah. 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 What are you going to do? It just makes you look crazy. But anyway, point being, with native, the sky's the limit, and native script can help you make that happen. So to get started, I went ahead and opened up my trusty, yeah, my trusty uh, command line and just typed in TNS, create emoting dash dash ng, TNS, Telerik native script, create a new app, and the ng flag helps me create an Angular mobile app with native script. Then I pop open <clears throat> my favorite editor, Visual Studio Code, and start coding. And because NativeScript allows us to use uh, Live Sync, we can go ahead and <laughs> <laughs> we can go ahead and start uh, refreshing the native emulator in real time across um, across platforms. So that's Jenny Motion, and then my iOS emulator, Live Syncing, Live Syncing, and you can go ahead and update using this NativeScript tooling, which is really nice for building your native mobile app. I guess I should point it that way. Tara. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but the magic in the background is actually observables. So what we have is this uh, beautiful support that we have in NativeScript for our Angular observables. Of course, they're very, very useful in Angular as well. So all I have to do is I set up a watcher with my, with my observable, and I gather the data into my app using this observable. And using the Firebase plugin, I go ahead and um, am I missing a slide? Hmm? I think I am. There you go. Because we just talked about Firebase plugins, but I just want to mention that once you create your app in Firebase, you need to integrate the Firebase plugin by our favorite plugin master, Eddie Verbruggen. And then you initialize Firebase in the NativeScript app, and then you leverage your observables. So gather the data with your observables and use the Firebase plugin to add this value event listener so that you're watching in real time for data to come into your app so that you can refresh in your native app. And that's a UI image refreshing. That's not a web view, FYI. Mm -hmm. So you can see here in Firebase, we're refreshing, and we see it right there. 
And then my favorite part, we get to start the plug-in party. And I'm the kind of designer that um, I, I cannot leave a pixel untouched. So I have lots of gradients, yeah. lots of things popping up. If you can tell, Jen, this is Jen's motif. Yeah, yes. it's all Jen. Yes. It's all me, 100% <laughs> me. So uh, we have uh, several plugins that make the native experience a little bit, uh, even a little bit more smooth. We have the fancy alert plugin that allows the um, um, a little alert to pop up in a beautiful fashion, cross-platform, and all of these are community-sourced plugins. We have um, a loader so that we can see, like Igor, the loading indicator. <laughs> and then we have a little toast pop-up, and I also have some sounds in my native mobile app, and I'll, I'll demo those later for you voting. You're going to love it. Okay, so enough with the plugins. Congratulations! With only one glitch, you just built a real-time mobile app. Yay. So, yay! Um, now, we have our images gathered into our application. We have them stored in Firebase. What are we going to do with them, Tara? We're going to show them on the web, and we're going to be able to vote on the web with some beautiful charts. Thank you, Jen. So, some of you may be asking, you know, Jen gave us a really good reason of why we want the native mobile app. So then, why do we want a web application? Uh, this is my pair programmer, Toshi. Uh, so there are a lot of reasons to make a web application. And a few of them are, you know, people may be just so wrapped up in what they're doing on their computer that they don't want to pull their phone out. Or maybe they're just too lazy to even find their phone. I mean, let's be honest, people have a button in their restroom where when they run out of toilet paper, they press it and it shows up on their doorstep the next day. It's so true. We're a little lazy, yeah. <laughs> But more importantly, why be exclusive? Why only give our users one way to emote? We have the ability, we have the technology to make an application that can sync in real time both what you're doing on the mobile, what your users are doing mobile-wise, and what we're doing on the web. So one of the things that Jen and TJ both talked about is that we used Firebase. So for the web application, we used Angular Fire 2 module and it's really easy to implement. It, you do an npm install, you put your configurations in, and then you implement it in your application. And Angular Fire 2 module is observable based using RxJS and Angular and Firebase. And it also does real-time binding. So it was everything that we needed, and actually a lot more. Mm -hmm. So with this application, we used the Angular CLI to create the project. We used Firebase to get and put our data. And then we used Kendo UI to do the visualizations and the charting. And that made building a real-time application such quick work. It was really nice. So as you all probably know, with the Angular CLI, when you create a project, it's built with you know, under a minute. And then with the Kendo UI charts, we made charts from the ground up. So unlike ng-conf 2017, there's no funny wrappers. Um, you like that? Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Good. All right. Good, Tara. Yeah. Very, very nice. <laughs> but also, since you're using actual true Angular components, everything that you use in Angular to optimize your application, you get right out of the box. So you're getting AOT, you're getting tree shaking immediately. And with Firebase, or with the Angular Fire 2 module, this was the line of code we used to get our data to do the visualizations. That's all we needed to do to bring, or the only line of code to bring in our information. Pretty, pretty succinct. It's really nice. And then in our template, this is where we're uh, putting in the Angular, or the Kendo UI charts. So it's just those few lines to put this in and get our data going, and you'll see these visualizations. Now, I want to just take this time to like really dig into the code. You know, we'll get, to get some live coding, and we'll do take a look at all the code that it took to get that data to refresh our charts and rebuild our charts. Tara, uh, Tara, there's yeah six minutes left. It's a sixty-minute talk. T what? There's Twelve minutes. Oh. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> so this is all you need with it's our like charts. Yeah. <laughs> You're basically getting your charts refreshing as the new data comes in. So you see over here on the left, this is the instance where we're going in and we're emoting. And as soon as you emote, you can see that, eventually, that the uh, Firebase database will update that data. And as soon as that data is updated, it goes to our instance on the right and puts that data into that other instance and shows it on these graphs. So I think with that, we should uh, give it a try. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go ahead and head over to emoting.me on your laptop or 
Yeah, on your laptop or on your phone, go to your browser. <laughs> yeah, and Jen's going to set up for our demo here. And while you're visiting emoting.me, Jen, we don't want to put that domain name to waste. Jen, how much was that $12 domain name? Um, it was $11.99. So Jen, Jen got a pretty good deal, but we still don't want to put that money to waste. So go ahead and load that up. And while Jen's getting ready, there's two things that we want to let you know about, Tara. So we have the mobile app here, and it's the admin app where you can upload the pictures. We didn't give you the ability to upload the pictures because, I mean, we really like you. We just don't trust you. Yeah. So. And I think the conference organizers uh, would be OK with our decision to yeah. not allow you to upload arbitrary images onto the big screen. I don't know I why. Think, yeah. I don't know <laughs> why. The other thing is that, you know, although we've tested this pretty thoroughly, right, um, we did not get the opportunity to test this with 2,000 of our closest friends. Yeah. I mean, I do have a lot of Facebook friends, you know, <laughs> just going to say, but the logistics of, you know, getting them all together and all testing the pizzas. app, you know, yeah. it, it takes quite a bit of time. So, you know, cross your fingers for us. We're, we're hoping for the best. And Jenna, are we all set? You want to tell people what they're seeing up here? Okay, so what you're seeing here is uh, the web app here, which you can look at on your, on your devices and start the voting. And then over here, we have my native emulator for iOS showing the app in real time. Now, if everything goes well, knock on plastic, we're going to have me taking a picture and loading it into the mobile, uh, the mobile app. You're going to see this appear in real time in the simulator and in, um, on the web. And then you're going to be able to go ahead and vote. So are you ready? Well, we're going we're gonna to have all of you do the wave for this picture. Yeah. You, you because, all know the wave, yeah. right? Does everybody, Come on. does everybody know how to stand up and sit down? <laughs> yeah. So, so we have a lot of confidence in your physical ability just, to do put, this. Put the computers so. aside before you start. Just, and just to make it clear, we've got to let people know this. If the wave is not very good and this demo fails, we it's on it you. Again. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's on your shoulders. We're expecting you participation from everyone. So I'm going to start it off on this end. And I'm looking at my left, everyone's right, the far end of the room. I'm going to do a countdown of a three, two, one to get this started. So is everybody ready? Ready? Oh, so confident. <laughs> All righty. Three, two, one. Oh, nice. There we go. Yes, keep Here it going. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, brilliant. All right. <laughs> oh, updating. Oh, updating success. <laughs> so and there's the picture see coming in, and you can start voting on that. Hopefully you is. see that on your screens as well. Ooh. All right. So just to let you know that I, I did see what we think of the crowd. <laughs> The sound play. It's going oh, yeah. pretty. <laughs> We're not yeah. fans of ourselves, apparently, right now. <laughs> oh, you haters. <laughs> so. All right. Vote, so vote. that's good. I'm proud of all of you. That was a beautiful Excellent wave. Work. Excellent work. So <laughs> the key takeaway here, it's, by the way, it's really hard to stand up here and make a serious point dressed sort of like this. <laughs> but, but the key takeaway here is, you know, although this app is kind of silly, right? Like this, this is a bit of a contrived example. It's pretty cool that you can build this, right? I mean, you saw Tara explain the architecture of the web app. Jen explained the co uh, context or the architecture of the native app. And these are tools that you're already familiar with, right? You've been learning about things like Angular, like native script for iOS and Android apps, and Firebase <laughs> at this conference. So these are things that you can build. And previously, that would have been really hard, right? I mean, a few years ago, you would have been dealing with raw web sockets and it was scaling issues, and then yeah. who even knows what, how in the world you would do this on iOS and Android. Excuse, excuse me. But today, <laughs> but today, it's as easy as using tools you already know. <laughs> Jen is out of control here. Yeah. Like Once you get her started, it's like. <laughs> she doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah, back to the slides, Jen. <laughs> right, sorry. Switch the slide, Jen. So basically, what I'm trying to say is with things like Angular, with NativeScript, with Firebase, building real time apps is now really easy and something that you can add to your own applications. And so with that, I think we all have one last takeaway we're going to end with. Jen, you want to kick us off? Uh, yes. So just to reiterate, uh, if you want to build a native mobile app for iOS and Android using JavaScript or Angular, you might want to take a look at nativescript.org. And nativescript, as we know, is the bomb.com. And I'm literally the only one in this room who is old enough to say that with legitimacy. <laughs> That's a good thing, yeah. <laughs> And Kendo UI really helps you build your Angular applications to be more robust with like our grids and our charts that are true Angular components made from the ground up. And obviously, the best way for me to visualize that was with a 3D spinning disco taco. Totally so appropriate. Check it out. Very and, nice. And if you want to talk any more about anything you saw today, if you want to talk about NativeScript or Kendo UI or Emoji. Um, yes. You know, we're at the booth, the progress booth, right outside the door. Come by and chat. We're very nice, I swear. Yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all very Thank much. Thank you.